I'm curious, like, the evolution of the game, right? There's been so many changes from, from the introduction of VAR <laughs> to expanding the World Cup, and you've covered this game, this sport, for too much time, right? And so I'm just curious your perspective on how the game has evolved and changed. Do you think, it's, do you think some of the changes have been good and impactful? Are you optimistic? Are you, are you bullish about the direction the game is heading, or do you miss some of the... Some of the old days. Uh, the, the, the technology, uh, it's here to stay, I understand that. And, and it's useful for some stuff. VAR just, just multiplies the controversy because at the end it's people using it. So, so that's I agree that. with that for sure. That's in terms of, of the technology. But if you talk about evolution, for me, one of the most fascinating stories and being able to write about him and follow it closely and seeing it, it's what Pep has done, Pep Guardiola has done with football. That is just, we, we've seen a genius at play. Uh, he's, he's, he's taking football to another place. And the amazing thing was that he has been uh, able to explain what this evolution is. And we've studied it and through it, we, we understood football better. Uh, I got my coaching badges because I wanted to know even more. And, and he's taking yeah, football to an, another level. Not everyone understands it. Uh, he's still doing that in front of our eyes and in the most difficult of leagues. That is, that is amazing. And the also amazing thing is that who's going to follow that up? Because he's got two more years left at Club Football. Shall and after Alonso? that, that's it. So he's, he's going to have you this You say year. that with confidence? I'm convinced. Two years, You're end of his contract. convinced because he told you? It's, it's I love asking Guillaume these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see him going into international? Yeah, coach, yeah. Coaching the US Definitely. team? US, oh, oh, wait, wait, England. no, I wasn't finished with the question. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's move on quickly. Uh, no, I, th I think in his mind he's had this idea that uh, at some point, you know, his back is killing him, he had an operation, um, he's better now, but if he cannot physically give absolutely everything, then maybe the time is to actually slow down and do something else. And Meaning he always, national team? Yeah, he always had the, the idea of, uh, of a break and the national team. And national team, he, he can choose England, Italy, Holland, Argentina, not sure Brazil. England, please. Would, would he consider US, do you think? I think if he, you have to give him the, because uh, he, he, people use so many sticks against him, but one, one of them is, yeah, but he has really good players to win. And it's like, well, if you're a NASA astronaut, you're not going to give him a Vespa to go to the moon, are you? I mean, you've got this guy that is a genius. Give him everything to see how far he can take the game, which he's doing, taking it further than anybody else we know. So. Give him the opportunity to win, and then maybe. So I, if I think you gave, England. Do you England. think England? I think England. I think England. Wow. He would love because that. he's been there so long, and he's dealt with the players. He's improved the players. Uh, how roughly? How often would you say you speak to Pep? Uh, Pretty often. Mm, when is necessary. Let's put it that way. What, what, is his, what does he do in the off-season? Where does he spend his time? Uh, he used to be learning and mixing with people and whatever, now he's golf and resting. Does he Wait, ever we're trying to, to dig into this England topic here, Mo. What, what are you doing? <laughs> well, hold on, I'm just, I, I got a question. Does he ever spend time in, I don't know, New York City? Uh, I'm not sure if he's come back. I don't know. Obviously, he's dead here for, in his sabbatical, um, and he's one of his favorite cities. I think you brought up a good point. Who's next? Uh, and I feel I've got that... It. I've got the answer to that. Xabi Alonso is the next manager, right? He, okay. He's played under Pep, he's played under Ancelotti, he's played under Jose Mourinho, Rafa Benitez, and what he's been able to do with this Leverkusen but, side. Did he say before it that he said Busquets answer, would be a good coach, didn't he? I, I tell you what I think. Uh, Xavi Alonso, so he goes to buy a Leverkusen and thinks, uh, if it doesn't work well, I go to Real Sociedad and start over. If it goes well, Real Madrid or Liverpool. So he's going to have a, and it's going so well, that next, whenever that is, it'll be Liverpool or Real Madrid. That, that's, that's the plan, the master plan. He's not doing anything that is like absolutely new, but he's doing a mixture of things that allow the team to win. But just very briefly, Pep Guardiola taught us a new way of building from the back, of getting the ball through the middle, of actually preparing for the last pass. He's done all that and he's new. N he's got two years left. The next step will be to organize attacks, so attack where, forget your instinct, you're going to have to do what has been trained. It goes against your instinct, you don't want to do it, players don't want to do it. He will need another 10 years to get there, and he will know how to, and he would, but he's got two years. So now he got a guy that scores the goals, and 
four centre backs playing. So the, the areas are the boxes are uh, sorted. Let somebody else get with the evolution of football. And there's only one manager that has understood that and has put in practice the next phase, the organise of the attack. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Who is it? Drum roll. And it's Roberto De Zevi. Oh. Wow. Roberto De Zevi. They speak for hours. They, and they speak in the language that only them two understand. <laughs> when they're talking, everybody leaves the room after half an hour because they don't understand what they're talking about. And Pepper's taking things from Brighton and Roberto De is Brighton. Obviously the other way around as well. Uh, because they, Pepper thing understands, the, that's, the, that's the guy. So I think he could end up being his replacement at City and take, take football to another level. If he had the choice between the US men's national team, who'd be going into a pivotal World Cup 2026, right? And the English national team stacked with talented players, who do you think he would choose? U.S. For as sure. somebody who speaks 100%. to him, hey, to, to, to do oh, well with U.S. the golden generation for 2026, you said to, to, be, to be able to make these guys take it to the next level. Everybody would be like even more of a genius. Do to any do it with of you England, speak to it, it just wouldn't be as impressive. Wouldn't you want to do the, the most impressive but he's thing? A, yeah, he doesn't really have time to work with them and as a national coach. He doesn't. He if, doesn't. You're, if you're an F1 driver, do you want to drive a Ferrari or a, or a Fiat? Well, hold on, we, 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 so, hey, don't hate on Fiat, <laughs> bro. You, you, on, you see that Fiat in the world? Hey, I could put some different engine in that thing, get some nitros. You don't even know what I'll be doing <laughs> in that thing. <laughs> but I think this is also important context. With the national team, you're taking the best players. So it's not that you need to re-educate them. Unless you in, have in a, educated them already. Which would be the well, case well, there's not. with an English national He's not team. Yeah, but who? Jude Bellingham. That's Guillaume's answer, everybody. I'm not, not Jude Bellingham. Bellingham. He's, 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 he's not Saka or Jude Bellingham. Bellingham No, but Saka, who's managing Saka? Mikel. Who is? A disciple. Who was managing Jude Bellingham? Say, at Borussia Dortmund, they followed his, his teaching very closely. Hey, Gio, was that Dortmund? Dortmund? Yeah, Gio. So was Christian. I should just have hey, terms of Klopp. I just think that he's a, uh, but, but we're talking what, 2026? So Gareth Southgate, what do we do with him? Listen, if Pep's on the market. <laughs> oh, so you just, you're saying bin him now. I even even it, if he were to win the Euros, you would bin him. For Pep? You'd bin him. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. messed up. Look at hey, you. Hey, Look at you. Hey, some people just <laughs> say Look loyal you. these days. Loyalty. The way, the way Loyalty, Gareth is, man. the way Gareth is. He'd step aside. I think it would. You, you can have This is Pep. crazy. I mean, it may not ever happen. <laughs> but I think it'll go like, Pep, are you ready? You know, he's had a long time with the national side. And I think if, I think if Pep watched the game against the US versus England in the last World Cup, yep. he's saying, yeah, there's something with I that I did US that mistake team. once. I was a Barcelona fan as a kid, and Espanol beat Barcelona at 7-2, and I thought Espanol is better. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do that. And I'm about to step Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you liked this episode of Kicking It, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to enjoy more raw and unfiltered content from me and the boys.